in the 21-22 season, two young teenage midfielders were lighting up the football world in Ryan Gravenberg and Jude Bellingham. But after Ryan Gravenberg's move to Bayern Munich, he kind of fell off a cliff, but it looks like at Liverpool he's going to be rejuvenated with him looking very good so far. And while Bellingham, you know how good he has been right now. But two seasons ago, or summer 2022, Real Madrid actually had a three-man dream midfielder target list, which consisted of Gravenberg, who chose Bayern Munich, Bellingham and Chouamene. They named those three midfielders as the game changers. Ryan Gravenberch was one of the highest rated midfielders in Europe because he was almost considered better than Bellingham when he was at Ajax and Bellingham was at Dortmund. He was phenomenal. And as someone that's a Man United fan and watched a lot of Ajax in their final couple of games under Eric Tenag, I always said the two players I want Tenag to bring to United would have been Gravenberch and Timber who went to Arsenal and Liverpool. And unfortunately, we got Anthony, but I am happy that we got Martinez. So we're going to talk about Ryan Gravenberg and why, you know, he's looking back on track at Liverpool and how he could be the next Bellingham, potentially even have a higher ceiling than Bellingham. Now, obviously, Bellingham is a lot better than Ryan Gravenberg right now. Ryan Gravenberg is getting back on track. He's warming up, but he was very much on level with Bellingham, potentially even better two seasons ago. And the reason he gets compared to Bellingham, as you can see by his FBRAS statistics, is the midfielder with the most similar statistics to him is Drew Bellingham, followed by Conor Gallagher. But this is Ryan Gravenberch's stats in the last 365 days per 90. And you've got to remember, he was very much out of form at Bayern Munich. And a lot of this is Bayern Munich statistics, where he wasn't playing a lot of minutes. And he was still in the 91st percentile for non-penalty goals, uh, 99th percentile for non-penalty XG, uh, 86th percentile for shots, 92nd percentile for expected assists, 99th percentile for non-penalty goals and expected assists, 98th percentile for shot creating actions. He was still very much influencing the game, just like Bellingham does at Madrid going forward. And he was in very high percentiles for pass completed, progressive passes, progressive carries, successful take-ons in the 97th percentile. And even defensively, he was in one of the higher percentiles. And if you compare that with Bellingham, you can see that Bellingham goals and assists, of course, is going to be in a little bit of a higher percentile for a lot, lot of the statistics there. But this is Bellingham, who's had the best year of his life, whereas Gravenberg is trying to get back on track percentile. Uh, round midfielders and you can see that they are very very similar players which is why they've been compared but obviously Bellingham is just lighting up Real Madrid so I want to basically break down why I think Ryan Gravenberg could be one of Liverpool if not maybe even if he reaches the potential he was seen at having at Ajax for 35 million pounds Liverpool's best ever sign we're going to talk about Gravenberg why he was so highly rated at Ajax then we're going to talk about his player profile why he's ceiling so high and how he's done so far at Liverpool and why he's perfect for Klopp so why was Ryan Gravenberch so highly rated at Ajax? I spoke about Real Madrid having a list of three midfielders, their scouts named game changers of Gravenberch, Chouameni and Bellingham. And we know about Chouameni and we know about Bellingham. They are game changers. And Gravenberch was also on that list. Unfortunately, Gravenberch and Bellingham went down very different routes last year. But at Ajax, Gravenberch was known for his mobility. He would look for space between the lines. He'd run into those spaces. He would can dribble the ball into those spaces. He would always find those spaces between the midfield and the defensive line, between the opposition's line. But he was also able to pass and break the lines, which is such a good trait for midfielders to have, especially in ball, or ball progression. He was very good out of possession and making those runs and in possession and progressing the ball. And he would make those runs to rupture the opposition's lines. And there was times where you could see him actually break through the opposition's last line and then he's a clear goal threat or he's creating something as well uh, but he was also very good defensively he offered, offered that frontal support he was always there in attack so on the left back to another shot but he was also very good defensively putting in cover and he used to have a really good cross on him which, haven't, which we haven't seen so much recently but at uh, Ajax he was known for putting in a few crosses as well so let's show you a little bit about him and, and probably his two best traits which is going to really benefit Klopp and we're going to link this to Klopp so he was known for being able to break that play that line breaking pass as you can see that pass that breaks the opposition's line and plays someone in it creates something makes things happen kind of what Bruno Fernandes is known at doing but he was also known for being very press persistent he could get the ball in the midfield area have a lot of players around him and manage to dribble or play or pass himself out of the press which means the oppositions when they try and press Liverpool they're not going to have much success because they have someone like Gravenberch and Sobosly in the midfield who are so press resistance. The oppositions, there's no point in them pressing Liverpool, which makes it harder for them to think, mm, how are we going to get the ball off Liverpool, which is going to help Liverpool further dominate. Now, this was Ryan Gravenberch's stats at age 18 at Ajax. This was a couple months into you know his season at age 18 at Ajax, and he was third for dribbles one per 90, second for progressive runs per 90, and second for deep completions per 90, showing how good he was. And you could even see his all-round statistics, defensive duels per 90, he was sort of in that mid-range, but offensive duels per 90, he was very much at the top of 
area of his players. And you can see he's an all-round eight. He can play as a six, he can play as an eight, he can play as a ten. Very all-round player, but his progressive runs is probably what made him stand out in terms of, I think, his technical ability and his IQ to read the game, which is such an important thing in football. So if we continue on a Ryan Grappenbach, what kind of player was he? So he was best at Ajax in a 4-3-3, where he would play as the left-sided eight. Now, I think Liverpool's long-term plan will to be get a proper number six in because they never really replaced Fabinho. Get that long-term six in, Graven and Birch, Sobersly. I think that's Liverpool's long-term plan and I think that's what Graven and Birch is made to do. But he's very capable of playing as a left DM in a 4-2-3-1 if you want to play with Pivot. He's also capable of playing as a number 10, maybe the role that Bellingham was doing at Real Madrid and maybe they had Graven and Birch lined up for that originally, but he chose Bayern. And he would basically, at Ajax, score, assist and dictate player age 18-19 that Bellingham was doing at Dortmund. And I think that's why they were two midfielders at age 18, 19 that got people off their seat. And he was just that modern midfielder. And as you can see here, these were his stats from Ajax. If you look at progressive runs per 90, he was at the very, very top. And progressive passes per 90, he was above average. But he was known for his ability to get the ball, dribble the ball. We've seen that a few times for Liverpool. Dribble the ball, get it up the pitch, make those runs, enter the space, get into the space, find the space, utilise the space and improve the players around him. So what makes him stand out, though? Because he's very technically good. Ajax players often technically good. They get that Ajax, Johan Cruyff education. But he's not just very technically good. He's very athletically good. He was compared to Rijkaard because of the way that he had the skill, the technique, the vision, athleticism and power. Athleticism is like you could be really technically good, but if you're a midfielder and you're four foot and you're weak, you get pushed off the ball. Whereas Gravenberch is a bit like Van Dijk. You know how Van Dijk, I know he's not been as quick since his injury, but... Van Dijk was very good defensively, but then you couldn't beat him in the air. You couldn't out sprint him because he was so fast. You couldn't out muscle him because he's so strong. You know how Saliba is very fast, very strong. He's got that elite athleticism where even like off the ball, you can't outrun him because he's fast. You can't out strength him because he's strong. You can't beat him in the air because he's tall. Not only has he got the IQ and the technical ability, but he has that athleticism, which will make him stand out. And I think what I really like about Graham Birch and why I was a big fan of him was his just mainly his technical ability to evade the press, play between the lines, break the lines, but most importantly, glide up the pitch. We've seen a little bit at Liverpool, you can just get the ball and he just glides it. So comfortable moving the ball up the pitch, progressing the ball through the midfield. And as a United fan, that's something that United are really struggling at the moment. Ball progression, we have to keep going along. Whereas Graven Birch is that guy to so just move the ball up the pitch, do really well with that. And when you're good technically, when you've got good athleticism, you can be a top player. And there's always the worry of certain players, will they succeed in England? Will they be good in England? But Ryan Gravenberch, when you have that athleticism, that physicality, that pace, that strength, you know that he'll be fine in England. Whereas other Ajax players potentially weren't suited to the Premier League. They might be more suited to the Bundesliga or La Liga. There's certain players that aren't just suited to the Premier League. And there was, you know, Ryan Gravenberch has to get his next move after Bayern Munich, right? He's such a good player. And I think he's very suited to Jurgen Club. I think he's very suited to the Premier League. And so far at Liverpool, he's been decent. Not played loads yet, but he's getting warmed up. Versus Toulouse, he was brilliant. Probably standout player versus Luton. That first half versus Everton, he was absolutely fantastic. Had some decent Europa League games. Got two goals, got two assists. Been very decent for Liverpool so far. Showing his quality. And you've got to remember, he's still getting warmed up. He barely played football last season. He's finding his feet. He's getting used to things. Like, I think he's the type of guy that's going to explode in the second season. Sobersly's come in and he's been Liverpool's best midfielder. He's come in and exploded. But... I think Ryan Gravenberch is going to be that guy that explodes in his second season. So, as I've said, he's only getting started. He's not played much. He played a 1,000 minutes with Bayern Munich last season. He was Bayern Munich's Donny van der Beek last season. But you can see how good he's been already for Klopp. And he is a player that will suit the way Klopp wants to play. I'm not saying that Klopp's a transition side, but he likes Liverpool to be able to move the ball quickly from defence to attack. And when you've got Ryan Gravenberch that can dribble the ball, that can glide, glide up the pitch, that can find those spaces, play between the lines, break the lines do all of those things while also just being fast and physical and helping out defensively. That's going to really help Liverpool with their long-term plan. I think he'll get better when Liverpool sign that long-term six because I think he'll have more freedom to be the better player he is as a left-sided number eight. But he's got four goals and assists already. You can see him really help Liverpool in progression, which is what Klopp wants. He wants players that are really good at progressing the ball quickly. He can get the ball into Salah. He can play the ball into Nunes. And we see that Nunes, when he makes those runs in behind, he's so lethal. And I think when we see more Ryan Gravenberch playing in a more advanced role, you'll see him dribbling up the ball, getting it and playing in Nunes and Nunes making this run for Liverpool. And I think that actually Gravenberch and Sobersly, when they've got that proper number six behind them, no offence to McAllister, he's doing it as good as he can do, but he is being played out of position. 
I think we'll see Darwin Nunes really come to light as well. But I think there's a really good player in Darwin Nunes. He does everything right. He still doesn't get the finishing right. He just needs to not think as much. But I think Raven Birch is the type of guy to unlock Darwin Nunes. And this was a bit of a scouting report that kind of summed up Ryan Raven Birch. They said he's good at keeping the ball in tight spaces by making quick passes and avoiding pressure, which is what you want in a player. His passing accuracy is impressive, consistently finding his teammates uh, with his right foot. When playing in advanced positions, he's skilled at sending precise passes between the fullbacks and centre backs, setting up opp opportunities for teammates to make crosses into the box. As said, he's going to really help Nunes. I generally think Gavin Birch is going to help Nunes explode and become a better player, which we're seeing from Nunes in early days. We're seeing him become a better player. And I think he will also help Liverpool improve at breaking down the low block. I think they struggled a bit versus Luton, but I think he will further help them improve at breaking down the low block. So that is my analysis on Ryan Gravenberch and why I think he's going to be a great signing for Liverpool. Even though I can't stand Liverpool, I am a big Ryan Gravenberch fan. I always have been, and I think he'll be a fantastic player. Let me know if there's any Liverpool players you want me to do an analysis on next. I've got Julian Timber coming up next because, you know me, I like my Ajax players. I also want to do an analysis on Isaac of Newcastle. I really like potentially Mickey Van der Ven, Depp and Rice, Madison. There's a lot of players I want to do. But I think it of maybe Kwanzaa and Van Dijk kind of put together analysis. Maybe I'll do Darwin Nunes. Let me know which player you want to see me analyse next. Thank you for watching. Smash a like, smash a subscribe. Bye.